And now, Death Valley Days. Howdy, folks. I'm the old ranger, and I have another interesting true story for you about the historic Death Valley country. Miners generally are a superstitious lot. They believe in ghosts that haunt the underground. Believe it's bad luck for a woman to go inside a mine. Believe in all sorts of charms and jinxes. So just keep that in mind as I tell you this story of the Hoodoo Mine. Her name is Lupin, this Paiute maiden who has stopped at a water hole in Death Valley. Lupin, the same as the blue wildflower that carpets the valley in the early spring. But this is June, June 1890. The flowers have gone, so have the prospectors. Even the Indians have moved up into the Panamints to escape the heat. No wonder, then, that Lupin is surprised to hear someone approaching. Howdy. I thought from a distance it was my partner. I didn't expect to find a pretty girl out here. You must be thirsty. Thanks. My name's Norman Barry. Barry? Like what grows on bushes. My name Lupin. Lupin? Like what grows on stems. <laughs> this is the best thing that's happened to me in weeks. You know have luck prospecting? I haven't had a smell of silver. And yet there must be silver in these parts. Yes. We Indians know where to find it. Yeah, but I'm no Indian. You making camp here? Would you like to stay and eat with us? Well, there's plenty for three. That is, if you don't mind beans and bacon. If I go home, I eat pine nuts, pinyon. Then you'll stay. Good. Pine nuts don't sound to me like much of a dish. Why, you depend on them much. All summer long, we gather them. When you could be mining silver? Silver no fill stomach. Sell it and it will. Locate a rich enough mine you could eat for years. That is white man's way. Sure. Then why you no ask me where find silver? You mean you'd tell me? Hey! Hey! My partner, Bill Snyder. Not a bit. We're having company for supper. Miss Lupin. Well, fast worker. Turn my back and you pick yourself up a squaw. Easy, Bill. She savvies English. I'll go gather some firewood while you're unpacking. Well, what's the matter, Pocahontas? You afraid of me? You don't need to be. <laughs> She ran out on us. Had a big bucket home, maybe. Wanting his supper. Well, that's too bad. Just when she was going to tell me where to find silver. What? The Indians know. Did she let you in on it? She sort of indicated she would. Kind of went for you, huh? Ah. She sure is a good looker. Made a deep impression on me. You better follow her. Learn about this silver. I don't even know where she lives. You'll find her. You've got to. <laughs>
I was afraid I'd get away from here without ever seeing you again. You leaving soon? Sun up tomorrow. This is our last day. Weather just too hot? The uh, pickings are too poor. We've used up our grub stake. The panelments are full of silver. We've been looking in the wrong places then. Let Lupin show you. Lupin can draw maps. Lupin. That wasn't the only reason I wanted to see you again. You know entrance to Wild Rose Canyon? Yes. Head up that canyon past old Christmas gift mine. Well, how far? Half sun east. Look for narrow canyon to right. Yeah? So narrow you think it lead nowhere. Trail steep, but keep climbing. Thanks. Twenty-foot seam, at least. Yahoo! <laughs> and look, Helen, how deep she goes. Oh, I could kiss that squaw. I could kiss you. <laughs> I could kiss the ground I'm standing on. <laughs> well, let's get busy and stake out the claim. Sure, sure. What do we call it? The Lupin Mine. Yeah, the Lupin Mine. Owners, Snyder and Barry. The Lupin Mine. Owners, Barry and Snyder. Sure, sure, Barry and Snyder. Well, that marks the boundaries. Here's the record of it. All right? Yeah. Does it? Now let's get over to Independence and file that duplicate with the county recorder. Yeah. in the shade. Take my advice, you'll wait for cooler weather before you go back up to that claim of yours. With an assay report like the one we got, $90 to the ton? Little <laughs> Chief. You're not as broke as we are, Jake. Hope you don't run into no sandstorms. Anything else you can think of? Yep. This time of year, number of things. Sourpuss, grave digger. You know, we ought to be able to get about $80,000 for our claim. Divide that by two, don't forget. Unless there was something to happen to one of us. Now, you sound like the grave digger. What's going to happen to us? And I'm well satisfied with $40,000. Well, I'm not. You're not going to catch me sweating my life away for 40000 bucks. Sure must be an easier way than this to get into big money. Say, what's gotten into you talking like that? Maybe it's the heat. Come on, let's get going. It'd be a lot cooler at the mine, 6,000 feet up in the mountains.
bad blast and cloudburst. Sending us days off our trail like this. <laughs> We'd just be glad you're still alive. Still got a mine. Half a mine. Well, don't forget it was me, Lupin told. Some partners wouldn't even have gone 50-50. I put up half the grub stake. And the mine's recorded in both our names. So what are you arguing about? Come on, let's get going. Go ahead, you're leading the way. about 500 feet down where that flash flood travel. Got you? Yeah. Everything's dancing. I'll get you some water. Oh. That's all we got left. You mean we're out of water? You drank what was in there. There was only a few drops. Bill! Wait a minute. Nothing to get excited about. I'll never make it back to the claim in this way, in this heat. Man, you do look bad. I'll tell you what. You wait here. And I'll go back down the trail and fill up the canteens. First water I come to. I'll rig some shade up for you. Get back here just as quick as I can.
Norman. with thirst. Must help him quick or die. We will go. him in wet blankets. His body will soak up water like dry sponge. This shows you the boundaries, Mr. Faulkner. The Lupin. How'd you ever come to give it that name? Oh, just an idea. This is recorded in two names. Yours and a Norman Barry. He was my partner. You bought him out? He was killed in an accident. That flash flood you were talking about? No, a heat stroke. Too bad. Yeah, we were like brothers. Well, if those samples assay as rich as you claim, you've got a deal. For 75,000? Right. Meet me at Greenlight Ranch on the 15th, and we'll sign the papers. I'll be there. <laughs> What are you doing here? The way you engines can creep up on a guy. You say your partner died in an accident? So you were listening. Yes, I tried to get you. You lie. What are you talking about? You know. Norm had a heat stroke. I went for help, but when I came back, he was gone. Wandered off, out of his head most likely, and fell into some canyon. There was no trace. You murdered him. You killed him to get mine for yourself. Lupin mine, but it do you no good. From now on, this mine is cursed. Put the engine sign on it, huh? <laughs> well, go ahead. So happens I'm selling it. Sell it as often as you like. It do you no good. This mine, with blood of your partner on it, will haunt you to your death. Hi, Jake. Hi. Sure is hot. Got anything cold inside? How could anything be cold in weather like this? What brings you here? I'm meeting Faulkner in the morning to sell him the loop in mine. That'll be a neat trick if you can do it. What do you mean? Faulkner's dead. Dead? Happened ten days ago. Horse threw him as he rode up to the star. Struck his head. Killed instantly. My price is 75,000. 60,000. That's a whale of a drop. You're anxious to unload, aren't you? It's just that I... I got plans to go to Europe. Now you can go. All right. $60,000 cash. At the graveside. I'll get in touch with my company, confirm the deal, and be a formality. How long will that take? I'll send a wire from Daggett. Should get word right back. 
Thanks, Mr. Clark. We're both to be congratulated. Hi, Jake. Hi. Bring any mail for me? Nope. I was expecting a very important letter. From that fellow was going to buy your mine? Yeah, Timothy Clark. Here, read this. Mining man suicide. Timothy Clark found shot in office. No. Oh, no. I'll let you have it for 50000 Man, it's worth half as much again. Not for my money. Look, O'Brien. You look. I'm an old sourdough. Was prospecting around Death Valley when you was wearing knee pants. 50000 is too high. How much will you pay? Mm, 40000 Oh, you chisel. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. We'll draw up a bill of sale right here and now. Hold on a minute. You're going to well, Shay. Before I sign anything, I want to do a little digging around here. Are you suggesting this claim's been salted? Now, nah, don't go getting your neck all bowed. I just want to examine a few more samples. Samples? I'll give you all the oil you want. Sacksfuls of it. I'll let you smell it. Taste it. The richest silver in a pan in a delupin mine. Ah! What? Vic, you went my foot. Ah! Take your boot off. I'll wash it out and bandage it up. It's no use. I'm a god. Don't be a fool. It may not be deep. No, it's all going to clean through. A rusty pit. I'm a goner. Nonsense. We'll saddle up and head back for the ranch. I'll never make it. I can feel the pains already shooting up my leg. Blood poison sudden. What's the matter with you? Are you yellow? You don't understand. I'm the victim of a curse. An Indian hoodoo. <laughs> Bless your high love. But it's true. She put a jinx on the mine. Until the day of my death. She. Uh. Bill, pull yourself together. Pull yourself together. Bill. Fear can kill. I've heard for days. Heard you tell about the mine, about Bill's death. Couldn't talk. Don't try talk, even now. You saved my life, Lupin. Why? It mattered to me. Lupin. Mine's safe. It's waiting for you. Only one owner now. No. Two owners, you and me, the loop in mine. And that's the end of the voodoo mine. But the beginning of life for Norman Barry and his lovely Lupin.